Hello. So I've come up to the Prime Minister number 32, Archibald Primrose, the fifth Earl of Rosebery. Um, now, Primrose, or I should say Rosebery as it was known, um, was the last of Queen Victoria's Prime Minister. She had a total of 10 uh, going from the beginning of her reign with Melbourne, Peel, Russell, Derby, Aberdeen, Palmerston, Disraeli, Gladstone, Salisbury and Rosebery. Uh, she saw 10 Prime Ministers. Our current monarch has seen 12, but I'll come to that. Um, Rosebery doesn't particularly stand out as a Prime Minister, although we had a relatively interesting personal life. Um, he was born in 1847 in London. Um, see if I can find a specific location for that made there, according to Wikipedia. Um, came from a very wealthy background. I think in the previous video I mentioned the wealthiest Prime Ministers, Rosebery would definitely be up there. Um, he was also known as the first Earl of Midlovian. Um, and he, I believe, was of Scottish descent. Um, Charles Street Mayfair, he was born in. His father was Archibald Primrose, Lord Dalmeny. And I believe he also went by the courtesy title of Lord Dalmeny. A um, bit of information about... Uh, oh, but incidentally, there only seems to be one or two pictures available of Rosebery. She was a young man who I always believe... Uh, I mean, young in prime ministerial terms. Um, I always believe it look, looks a little bit like David Cameron. Sent somewhat similar features. I'm not saying they're like twins, but there, there's somewhat similarities there. Um, Rosebery was only Prime Minister for a brief period from March 1894 to 18, June 1895, so just over a year. Um, this is an article from Wikipedia, and this is a quote from Rosebery. Incidentally, he was a liberal, but many believe a pretty right wing liberal, um, conservative, uh, Tory esque liberal, very much in favour of empire and so on. There are two supreme pleasures in life one is ideal, the other real. The ideal is when a man receives the seals of office from a sovereign. The real pleasure comes when he hands them back. The Earl of Rosebery is best known today as a staunch upholder of the British Empire. Born into a Scottish aristocratic family, the Earl of Rosebery attended Eton and Christchurch, Oxford, where he developed an interest in both football and, excuse me, in both politics and horse racing. That was a slip of the tongue because um, he w did actually develop an interest in the early FA. Um, the, the early fo football association, which, from what I gather, was um, created in Sheffield in the 1870s. Um, so he was a keen sportsman. Um, while at Oxford, he succeeded to his grandfather's title as fifth Earl of Rosebery in 1868, and took up his seat in the House of Lords. A year later, he bought his first race course, Ladis, against university rules. Offered a choice by the university authorities between selling his horse or abandoning his studies. He chose the race horse. That's saying something. Lord Rosebery first became a public figure when he managed Gladstone's successful Midlovian campaign in 1879. In 1881, Gladstone convinced him to take up the post of Under Secretary at the Home Office with special responsibility for Scotland. Not convinced that Gladstone was interested in Scottish affairs, he resigned after two years. He then travelled the world promoting his imperialist ideas. In Australia, he made a celebrated speech announcing the British Empire is a Commonwealth of Nations. Um, so I'm just wondering now if that's where the concept of Commonwealth came from, from Rosebery. Um, in 1885, he joined Gladstone's cabinet as Commissioner of the Board of Works and Lord Privy Seal. A year later, he became Foreign Secretary in Gladstone's third administration. Queen Victoria, an admirer, described it as the only real, really good appointment in the whole government. So obviously, Queen Victoria thought highly of Rosebery. The death of his wife Hannah in 1880, so excuse me, in 1890, kept him out of politics for some time, but he was eventually persuaded by Queen Victoria and the Prince of Wales to return, and in 1892 he became Foreign Secretary again in Gladstone's last administration. When Gladstone resigned in March 1894, Rosebery accepted the post of Prime Minister, although he did so reluctantly, regarding it as a dangerously poisoned chalice. He would have preferred to, to spend his time on horse racing and literature. Earl of Rosebery did not enjoy the success in office of his liberal predecessor Gladstone. It was a short-lived administration. He inherited a divided cabinet facing an obstructive Tory-dominated House of Lords 
and was heavily attacked in the Commons to opposing Irish Home Rule. His imperialist designs and foreign policy, such as expansion of the fleet, were defeated by disagreements within the Liberal Party, while the House of Lords stopped the Liberals' domestic legislation. His government lasted only 15 months, failing in June 1895 over a vote of censure and military supplies. In the following year, he resigned as Liberal leader in the interests of party unity. He became the leader of the Liberal Imperialist Division of the party, but retired from politics altogether in 1905, when Henry Campbell Bannerman was chosen as Liberal Prime Minister. In his later years, he turned to writing political biographies. He died in 1929, requesting to hear the Ethan Bolton song before he passed away. And he was checking this out, 82 when he died in Epsom. Um, um, one more thing on the Wikipedia, excuse me, on the Downing Street uh, web pages is interesting. It says, Roseberry's declared ambitions were to marry an heiress, own a horse that won the Derby, and become Prime Minister. He fulfilled all three. Uh, that's somewhat of a contradiction from the, the segment that says he didn't want to become First Lord of the Treasury, but there you go. Um, so in that sense, I suppose he had a, a very successful life. He achieved the three things he wanted to. On the other hand, he, he is not uh, particularly well met, remembered Prime Minister, and certainly not on the scale of Salisbury, Gladstone, or Disraeli. There we have it, the Fifth Earl of Rosebery. Um, uh, like I say, one other thing that would stand out, I think he almost certainly ranks among our wealthiest Prime Ministers.